Dear sewing friends, go ahead and grab some beautiful fabric, some bright and colorful fabric scraps or whatever you have. Everything goes and let's make something beautiful. Now in this video I have for you five really awesome, really useful ideas that you can probably make between 10 to 30 minutes. Of course, nobody's sitting there with a stopwatch, nobody's counting every second. So it really depends on your pace of sewing, so it might take a little bit longer. And I would say that most of them, if not all, are very beginner friendly. So I'm really confident that as always, if I can do it, then you can do it for sure. And I know that right now the world is a mess. And I would like to share with you that sewing is one of those things that really helps me center myself and just sort out my emotions, sort out my thoughts. So if nothing else, I truly hope that this video gives you a little bit of joy, maybe a little pause from everything else that is going on. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. For this first project, we're gonna need to cut two rectangles, one bigger, one smaller, and you truly need just a tiny bit of fabric. And this particular project comes together probably in about 10 minutes. Now, the fabric scraps that you're gonna be using, use something that is a little bit lightweight, something a little drapey. You don't want anything too stiff because we're making bandana. Now, this is a great alternative to a bucket hat, which is also great during summertime and spring, you know, gardening season and traveling season, but bucket hats, sometimes keeps a lot of heat in this area so it gets a little stuffy and a little sweaty. So bandana is a great substitute to that. You can make it for yourself, you can make it for your kiddos, so definitely a great thing to have for summertime. This is what we need to do next. So we're going to start working with this largest piece of fabric that we have for our project and we're going to start by finishing the longest edges of this piece of fabric and we're going to do double fold hem but a really narrow one just about quarter of an inch for each fold. Here you can see me do this double fold hem and as you can see I'm not even using any pins I'm just folding it right underneath the presser foot of my sewing machine and doing a straight stitch because this is such a quick and easy project it really is not necessary and everything comes out nice and neat. Now, for your convenience, of course, if you would like and if it's going to make it easier for you, you can use your iron to press the hem twice so that way it lays really nice and flat and makes it easier for you to stitch or you can use pin needles as well. Now, after that part is done, we're going to move on onto the casing for the elastic. So what you want to do is you want to take this piece of fabric, place it right sides together like so and then you want to stitch along this long edge right over here with quarter of an inch seam allowance just with a straight stitch as well. Next thing that we're actually going to do once this is done we're going to turn it right side out so go ahead and do that. Now, once we have turned this right side out, now go ahead and grab your elastic and we will need to insert it inside. And just remember to not to let it go and just to make sure that on one side you keep the elastic and the casing together because the next thing for us would be to stitch over it on one side and then catch the elastic on the other side and stitch over it again. So, here's my casing. Here's the elastic. I'm going to push it all the way like this. Then I'm going to grab a pin and I'm going to secure this. And after that, we're going to secure the elastic to the casing and we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side as well. But since the elastic is shorter than the casing, the elastic right now is right over here. So you will need to pull up this elastic till here and do exactly the same thing. Now that I have secured both ends, let's go ahead to the sewing machine and with a zigzag stitch we're going to secure these ends and you see how pretty it gets ruched all together like that and that is going to create a really nice back for our bandana. All right, and now comes the most interesting part. So we have our main piece done, we have our elastic piece done as well, and now we have to put them together and that's going to be the final step before you can actually wear your bandana. So this is your big piece, this is your elastic in the casing, this is right side up, for this one it doesn't really matter which side you're working with. And the next step that you're going to do, the final step, you probably will need to replay it one or two times so that you really understand, but I promise you it's really easy. And the first thing that we're going to do is, we're going to bring in this edge to this edge of the elastic, like so. And then we're going to bring this edge of our fabric to the opposite edge of the elastic, like so. So it creates over here, creates like a little envelope, okay? Now it gave us a loop over here. What we're going to do is, 
we're actually going to fold it in half like this, okay? And then we're gonna fold in these little dangly pieces like this and like this. Ta-da, that's it. Then grab a needle and secure it. And you will need to stitch with a straight stitch over it a few times so that way it's really nice and secure. And at the end, when you flip it out, it will be all nice and secure like this. And you're going to repeat it on both sides, on one end and on the other end as well. So at the end, it's going to give you a really nice clean result. You're not gonna see any raw edges. Everything is going to be enclosed and it's going to look really, really nice. And the last thing that you'll need to do is just tidy up some loose threads and that's it. Your bandana with elastic back is ready. And listen, of course, I understand that this is not going to win Fashion Accessory Award of the Year, but it's useful, it's practical, it definitely works. Like right now, I have made it a little bit uh, tighter, but if you just pop it open because I kind of fold it in, but if you pop it open, it actually covers a really good chunk of your head and it definitely is very convenient. All right, this next project is probably my favorite from the entire list for today, if not the favorite, for a variety of reasons. But most importantly, these are just so bright and cheery. They just put a smile on my face, and I hope you feel the same way. And these are so easy to make. They're practically no-sew. You're just going to need a hand sewing needle and thread for a couple of stitches, and that's about that. So let's get started. As you have seen, I have already made a couple of sets that I really, really like, and right now I need to make an extra one for this pink one. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and grab our little template, our little square that is approximately four by four inches or 10 by 10 centimeters. Go ahead and fold it like so, then like so, just like you would when we were doing snowflakes when we were kids, if you remember. So there we go, we have folded it in. Then what we want to do, I'm gonna take my previous template. You just wanna round up the corners. So you want to create like a little flower. There we go, because that's exactly what we're making. So this is how it would look. And now we also want to make sure that we cut a circle in the middle. So here's my template again, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna Cut this one off, there we go. So now when you open this up, so let's take a look. When we open this up, it's gonna give us that flower shape that we're after. And if you want, you can always adjust it a little bit. So for example, in my case, I definitely wanna make sure that I curve these in just a little bit more because I want those petals to be just slightly more pronounced. There we go. Take your fabric scraps and let's go ahead and fold them. So instead of cutting actual squares, what I usually do is I just go ahead and fold them in like so, like so, because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if it's a square or if you're folding fabric just like that. There we go. All you want to make sure is that you get that corner. And then you go ahead and you take that template, place it right over here so that way the sides of the template align with the sides of your folded corner. And then we're gonna go ahead and we are going to cut. So first you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna cut the petal shape. There we go. And after that, you're gonna go ahead and you're going to cut the inner circle. There we go. Once done, set it aside. And for each of the flowers, we need to cut three of those. So I need to cut two extra. Here I'm using knit fabric, so fabric with stretch, because usually once you cut that fabric, it doesn't fray, therefore you don't have to worry about it. But you can of course use some woven fabric as well. You might apply some fray check, which is a liquid that seals the edges of the fabric so it doesn't fray. All right, now that we have cut all three petals, this is what we want to do next. Take each one of them and lay them flat. There we go. And if one is a little bit bigger than the other, that actually plays in your favor because then you get a really nice kind of like dimensional uh, flower. So what we want to do right now is we want to layer them one on top of another, aligning the inner circle just like you see me do on a screen. Once done, go ahead and grab your hand sewing needle and thread. If we want to do a basting stitch or a gathering stitch right around the circumference of this corner. So make sure that you tie a knot 
And let's go ahead and do that. And this is so easy and so fun. You can do this with your kids, with your grandkids. You can do this to sell at a farmer's market. You can make these as gifts, as stocking stuffers. So many possibilities. I made these as little Easter gifts for kids at my daughter's daycare. So I truly think that this could be a great way how to reuse your fabric scraps and really make the most out of them and something beautiful as well. Once done, go ahead and pull on the thread so that we can gather the flower. There we go, nice and neat. And now let's go ahead and secure the thread in the knot so that way nothing goes anywhere. And we're going to be ready for the next step. Next step is that we gotta do the middle. So here you see I have the pink one, here I have the yellow one. For that, you can buy rhinestones. These are from Joann's and I don't necessarily like them too much. I would like them to be a little bit more sparkly, but this will do for now. If you have some beautiful flat buttons that you know that you're not going to use for anything else, you can also use those as well. This could be a great alternative and also will help you use them as well. Then you want to go ahead and grab your hot glue gun, drop a little bit right in the middle of the flower. Grab the center of the flower of your choice and place it right on top, right over there. Then go ahead and grab these. These are the empty bases for the clips. There we go, I got them on Amazon. If you're interested, I will leave the link for you guys in the info box below. Now, as you can see, these are exactly the same that I've used right over here. Now, you don't have to make it into a clip. You can make it as a decoration for an already existing garment. You can make it as something that you would put like on a skirt. So many opportunities. So definitely think about it, play around with it. But what we want to do next is we want to attach the back of the flower right over here. And what I like to do is I just like to put a line of hot glue right over here. Just like this. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and take our flower and we're going to place it right on top. There we go. Then I flip it over and I press it so that way we know for sure that it sticks. Hold it together just for a second. And you don't have to use hot glue. If you have any other glue that will do the job, you can also use that as well. And that's it. Our beautiful clip is ready to go. Now for this next project, you will also need just a tiny bit of fabric, a little bit of interfacing, but you can skip it if you have like cotton canvas or something that's really sturdy. And this is very multifunctional because Easter is coming, so you can use it as a little Easter basket. You can put like bunny ears or something. You can use it for any other celebration as something to put a gift in. You can also use it for organizational purposes, spring cleaning. I made this prototype before I made one, so that way I can test my idea before where I showed you how to make it, and my child is already using it to store her toy. So definitely quite a versatile thing. So let's get started and make one. So first we need a template. This is how mine looks. And I know that it looks a little odd and weird right now, but this side right over here is actually on the fold. So when you cut a full piece, it looks like this. This is where we're gonna sew the corners, and this is going to be the handle. So you will need to cut two pieces out of interfacing if you're going to be using interfacing, and then four pieces out of regular fabric. I have cut my two pieces out of interfacing, and the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go ahead and fuse them to the uncut pieces of fabric, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. This is going to be much easier and more precise as well. Just a little extra tip for the future projects as well. The pieces that I have just cut out, I will be using as a template for the remaining two pieces of the fabric. As you can see right over here, you will cut your interfacing without seam allowances, but the rest of the fabric with seam allowance added. All right, once we have cut all of the pieces, so two pieces that already have the interfacing on them and two pieces without the interfacing. What we want to do next is we want to finish this little handle on the inside first. Take the piece without interfacing, take the piece with interfacing, place them right sides together and what we want to do is we want to stitch the inside of the circle right over here just outside the interfacing. You can go ahead and pin it together so that way it's a little bit easier for you and then let's go ahead and head to the sewing machine. 
Now with a straight stitch, let's go ahead and stitch the inner circle of the handle. Now stitching outside of the interfacing and not on the interfacing itself is going to help us to turn it out really nice and neat when it comes time. Now this is done. Don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and at the end so that way you know that all of the threads are secured. Now what we want to do is we want to tidy up the seam allowance a little bit, make it a little bit shorter and also we want to snip in right over here at the curved sections of this handle so that way it's easier for us to turn it out and then we will turn it out and give it a really good press. All right, both of the sides are pressed and the handles are ready so you see it's really nice and neat. Now what we need to do is you want to make sure that this side with the interfacing is on the outside and you want to place them like this bottom to bottom and we want to go ahead and pin this together and just like we did with the handles you want to stitch just outside the interfacing just with a straight stitch. And once that is done, you're gonna go ahead and repeat that on the sides as well. So the bottom and the sides. And while we're at it, we're gonna do exactly the same steps for the lining of the basket as well. We're gonna do the sides and the bottom with the same seam allowance as you have on the piece with the interfacing. Now, once that is done, what we have to do is on each of the sides, so you can do the same thing on this side and on this side, you have to take it and you have to place it like so, seam to the seam, like this. Then we're gonna pin it together and then we're going to sew it across. There we go. And you're going to do exactly the same thing on this side and exactly the same thing on the remaining two corners on the other side. Now let's go ahead and make your way to the sewing machine and let's sew it with a straight stitch. Now once you're doing that, just make sure that everything aligns really well and that the seams are straight. And once that is done, here comes the next step. Push the lining a little bit to the side of the basket as you see me do on a screen. And let's go ahead and turn everything right side out. Now my child here is decorating my arm with stickers, so pardon that. There we go, you want to poke out those corners. And now you want to place the lining inside of the basket and we're almost done. Now at this point I like to line up these two seams right over here and pin them together just to make sure that everything stays in place. And then you want to grab some bias tape. Now the length of the bias tape should be enough to go around the top raw edge of the basket. So from one side over the handle to the other side over the handle. The width of it is about I would say a little bit more than half an inch. So once you fold it over it's about a little bit over a quarter of an inch. So that's what we, exactly where we're we're going to be doing next. As you see me do, you take your bias tape, you fold it over that raw edge and you catch both the lining and the outer part of the basket and you continue doing that all over. So over the handles and over the other side as well. Once you have everything pinned in place as you see me do right now, we're gonna make our way to the sewing machine and with a straight stitch close to the edge of the bias tape but making sure that we're catching both sides of the bias tape we're gonna go ahead and sew it. Now as you are actually approaching the end of the bias tape just make sure that you overlap it and turn it under so that way the raw edge of the bias tape is concealed and that's it your beautiful basket is done. If you're not sure how to do the end of the bias tape like I just mentioned I will leave the link for a visual for that in the info box below so that way you'll be all set. Now, if you are a member of this channel, first of all, thank you so much, and you already have a template available for this particular size of a basket. Now, if you're not sure what memberships are all about and what's that to begin with, it's a paid function that comes with quite a few perks. It's a really fun community that we have, and I will leave the information for you guys in the info box below. There's going to be a link to a video, a video trailer about memberships and a step-by-step -step instructions on how to join and where to find all of the links to all of the perks after you have joined. And I would love to ask you to read them step by step so that way once you've joined you can dive into all of the perks that you have right away. For this idea I went to Hobby Lobby and I picked up these little wooden boxes 
There we go. This was $2.99. There were some that were a little bit cheaper, a little bit more expensive, but I definitely like the shape of it. And I also like the fact that it has this tiny little magnetic piece that allows you to shut it. And this is a truly no sew project, but it comes together so quickly and with such a beautiful result. You will only need a tiny bit of fabric and some Mod Podge. So let's get started. Now, this is the fabric that I'm going to be working with. As you can see, this is kind of like a little awkward remnant of this beautiful fabric that I'm sure you've seen from my other tutorials as well. And I absolutely love the print. I believe that this is a 100% cotton that I got either at Hobby Lobby or, or Joann's. I don't exactly remember right now, but this is what we're actually going to do with it. So as you can see right over here, this fabric is permanently attached to our beautiful box to the top, but you can also do it to the sides, to the bottom, Bottom, to the inside and this is kind of like a little jewelry box where you can store little items something that would fit inside and that's exactly what we're going to do with this one as well so first I just want to go ahead and pick one of the pieces that I want to put on top there we go and then I'm gonna go ahead and take a pencil something that is not going to show once you're done with tracing it out Once you have the basic shape, go ahead and cut it out. There we go. Now let's go ahead and take this away. And next thing that we will need to do is we will actually need to adjust the size because obviously tracing it like we did doesn't give you the perfect result. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and tidy up the edges so that way it will give us a really nice result like we have right over here. Now that that is done, we are actually ready for the next step. And the next step is the Mod Podge. I'm going to be using this matte Mod Podge that I think I got at Dollar Store. And then you will also need a big just generic big brush like this one. And this is what we want to do next. First, we actually want to apply Mod Podge to the surface of our wooden object. Now, I'm not treating this wood surface with anything else. Now, if you're using some sort of other wood items that maybe perhaps you made yourself or maybe it's a piece of furniture, then you might need to do something else to the surface in order to like take away the oils or take away the finishing that it already has on it. So definitely take a look at that. But this one is just kind of like a blank. So I'm going to apply my Mod Podge to it right away. And I personally prefer that the surface has a little bit of extra Mod Podge on it. So that way it's a little bit easier for me to stick that fabric on there. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I know where is the center of my box. And then I want to take my piece of fabric and I want to lay it on top of it. And then I want to make sure that I align all of the little areas and all of the little corners that I want to align. So just move the fabric with your fingers if needed. All right, once the fabric is on it, so you see it doesn't move, it's already on it, we're going to apply about three extra coats of Mod Podge. That's what I did on this one, and I really like the result. So three extra coats of Mod Podge, and that's it, we're going to be done. Now, before we move on to our next project, which is also going to be an awesome one, probably one of my favorites as well, I wanted to let you know that this video has been kindly sponsored by Skillshare. Now, majority of you already know, but if you're not familiar yet, Skillshare is pretty much an online learning platform full of thousands of classes on a variety of topics. And we usually partner on videos like these ones, which I enjoy a lot, because it's a little bit crafty, it's a little bit about sewing, but it's full of creativity creativity and that's what Skillshare is all about as well and that's why I find this works really well. So if you want to rediscover an old passion, if you want to find something new to spark your creative joy or maybe just you know learn a new skill, Skillshare is definitely your place to go. You will find videos like sewing, arts, crafts, anything that goes into lifestyle, photography, digital arts, like a ton of different topics. There are no ads, so it really is centered around learning. The classes are usually well-structured. A lot of times there will be like a takeaway material or homework to do. You can also upload your own 
own project. So it really is a great platform. And for the first 1000 subscribers to click on the link in the info box below, you will get one month free of Skillshare membership to try it out and see for yourself. So when I go on Skillshare, I actually enjoy the fact that somebody else <laughs> is telling me what to do and when to do it. So I actually discovered this really fantastic watercolor tutorial by Zanina Nabil. But what I really resonated with is that she said in her opening video that anybody can do art. And that's what I try to tell you guys every time that anyone can sew. And if I can do it, then you can do it for sure. So I did a little bit of art following Zanina's tutorial. And I truly think that you might enjoy it as well if you have a little box of watercolors, a little bit of paper. So definitely click the link in the info box below, check it out. And I hope that you enjoy it. To get started, go ahead and grab a piece of fabric. Here I'm using 100% cotton. Everybody loves a good cactus print. So I always get asked, where did I get it? And I believe it was either Hobby Lobby or Joann's. And you don't want anything that's too flimsy for this particular project. You want something that has a little bit of weight to it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut two squares. Each one of them is going to be seven inches by seven inches, so seven inches this way, seven inches this way, but it doesn't have to be that way. So you can choose your own dimensions. This is what I'm working with. And just like for the tutorial of the basket that we made a little bit earlier, you want to cut a square of interfacing that's a little bit smaller than the actual fabric that you cut. So about three eighths of an inch smaller, maybe half an inch if you want to take a half an inch seam allowance. And then you want to cut out that square of interfacing and fuse it to one of the squares of the fabric, exactly the same way that we did for the basket. And here, an extra tip, an extra trick. I actually didn't have enough of the interfacing and I only had little scraps to work with, so I laid I it flat and I stitched it with a zigzag stitch so that way I can actually use those little interfacing scraps that I have. So this is a little tip, a little extra trick that you can use. Now what we want to do is we want to take one of these squares, place it right side up, take another one, place right side down. We want to take our pins and we want to pin it together and we want to pin it just outside that interfacing square so that way we know that this is where we're going to be sewing. And on one of the sides, it doesn't really matter on which one, you want to mark that you want to leave an opening that's at least I would say two, two and a half inches wide. So that way we can turn it right side out after we have sewn it together. So once you're done pinning it all together, you're going to do a straight stitch from the point when you marked for the opening all the way up this way this way all the way down and stop at that other mark so that way you have that opening left. Here's our project and I'm going to start sewing right over here. So place it underneath your presser foot. Don't forget that we also need to back stitch and let's get started. When you get to the corner, I'll lower your needle into your project, pivot, and then continue stitching. Once this is done, let's go ahead and snip the corners. Just be careful to not to snip through the stitching. And then also let's go ahead and tidy up the seam allowances as well. So that way it's a little bit easier for us to turn it right side out. When you get to the seam allowance that is right over here where we left that little opening, I usually go ahead and leave that seam allowance a little bit bigger. So that way it's a little bit easier for us to turn it in when we're going to be doing top stitching. Once done, let's go ahead and turn it right side out. Now that we have turned it right side out, it looks a little beat up, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a really good press. Well, now it's looking sharp. For this next step, we're gonna go ahead and top stitch all the way around this rectangle, so that way we can close that little opening that we left for turning it right side out. And it's going to be about, I would say, quarter of an inch, maybe one eighth of an inch away from the edge. So we're just going to be top stitching on the very edge of our rectangle. Once this is done, the last and final step is very easy. Take one of the corners, whichever, go ahead and fold it like so. And then on this side right over here, measure about one inch and place your pin needle catching both sides of the rectangle. And this is where we're going to be stitching with a straight stitch with a straight line. Then go ahead, take the next corner, fold it in the same way. Go ahead and measure about one inch and place a pin needle catching both sides. And you're going to repeat that on all remaining corners. 
Once you have pinned everything together, this is what you're going to have. And now let's make our way to the sewing machine and stitch up these corners. And that's it, your little dish is done. And as always, I encourage you to think outside of the box. Now I know that you've seen these a thousand times, but also this is what we usually see. But what if you actually turn it the other way? You might like it a little bit better that way. In fact, I might do as well. So you might wanna turn it this way. Who knows, maybe you like this shape of a dish a little bit better than the other way. And also this could be a really great kind of like carrier for a gift. So for example, obviously this is just an example. I haven't really thought it through just yet, but I actually poured a batch of handmade soaps. So this could be really a great way how to kind of combine two together and maybe put it in a bag. So here's a little soap, here's a little dish. Obviously, you're not gonna use this dish for the soap, but it kind of makes a really nice kind of duo of a gift. So definitely take a look. Spring cleaning is coming up, so that's one of the reasons I made these, because these will be really great sorting out little stuff, so that way it has a designated place in the house. Now, I have to ask you, would you like to see more ideas like these, quick and easy, using your fabric scraps, real straightforward for beginners? If the answer is yes, then click right over here. I have a full playlist of videos like this one that is full with really great ideas. So definitely click right over here. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that this put a smile on your face, that you enjoy this, and until next time, happy, thoughtful, and creative sewing. I'll see you soon. Bye.